We have a very interesting speaker. He's been uh, in the NMS family for the last three years. He gives one of the most riveting presentations that we have here at NMS. Would you please welcome Tony Van Veen, CEO, Disc Makers, and CD Baby. Thank you. All right, it's mid-2012. You're getting bombarded with advice, tips, what to do, how to go, all kinds of high-level stuff, all kinds of really niche stuff. So you've all just come back from lunch, so you can relax now. I'm going to just stick to basics here because it's amazing. I'm a firm believer in basics, um, and it's amazing how often the basics are the, the drivers, really, and uh, the basics are just not executed and not executed correctly. So the good news is that the basic laws of economics have not been repealed. If you, if, you, if you break it down to its most basic, it's all about creating a product, which is, which is you, which is your album, which is your song, uh, creating demand for it, and closing the sale. And so I'm going to offer you nine pieces of really pretty basic advice. Much of it will be familiar, but again, if it helps, kind of remind you of something that you should have been doing that you're not doing, hopefully that'll be helpful. One, the most basic thing, be where the people are, right? If you want to have people know about you, if you want to sell your music, if you want to make a living doing music, you have to be where your fans congregate. You have to get out and gig. I got a lot of people asking me, can I make it if I'm not gigging, if I'm just recording, getting my music out? And the answer is, Probably not. It's really, really hard. Get out there, try different kinds of gigs, try charity gigs, get on all the big digital music stores, get on CD Baby, um, go to the streaming sites, use peer-to-peer, -peer, um, be on Facebook, have your own website. You have to be everywhere, and it's, it's not that hard to, to get everywhere nowadays. A company like CD Baby can get you on most of these places, plus, obviously, your own site. And then you have to build your own list, which is actually your number two priority. Your number one priority is and always should be writing great songs. Because if you can't write a good song, there's no way that you're going be, uh, to be able to make it. But you have to build your list. These are the people who are going to be buying your music at some point in time in the future. And the best way to do that is to offer an incentive. Give somebody, give a fan something of value in exchange for their contact info, their email address. Uh, we have a client, uh, a band called I Fight Dragons, and uh, the, the lead singer, Brian Mazzaferi, was talking to me. He wrote an article about how he's adding 200 names a week to their list. And I asked him, how do you do that? And he said, well, it's very simple. We're recording all the time and we give away our best stuff. Whatever we record, we make it available for free. We record originals, we record covers, we make it available for free in exchange for an email address. We partner with other bands that we're friends with that do the same genre of music. We cover one of their songs, they cover one of our songs, and then they market our cover version to their list, we market theirs to our list, and so we cross-pollinate the fan lists. Obviously, you want to capture the zip code, a first name, so that when you're in their neighborhood, uh, you, can, you can reach out, let them know you're going to be performing. And then, of course, you need a professional email provider. Uh, our web hosting service, HostBaby, uh, comes with an email marketing program uh, that allows you to slice and dice your list. Uh, others, MailChimp, who are actually here, Mad Mimi, FanBridge, there's a number of other providers. So your list is key. Now, when somebody gets on your list, what's the next thing that's going to happen? The likeliest next thing that's going to happen is they're going to forget about you. So what you have to do, once you have this list, you have to retain mind share. You cannot let folks forget about you. People are bombarded with messages all the time. So you have to communicate. Now, how many of you have a, have a database, fan list? Uh, how many of you have a fan list with more than 500 names? More than 1,000? More than 2,500? Well, you guys are good. More than 5,000? 
More than 10,000? A couple. Wow. Congratulations. That's great stuff. I don't see that that often. So you need to communicate with them. And, and, and don't just spam them with offers, right? Buy my CD, buy my merch, buy my CD. It's a great way to immediately get tagged as spam and go into the spam folder or get people unsubscribed. You have to add value in your communications. Give folks something that they would be interested in. And what is that? It, you'd be surprised. It could be, you know, stories from the road when you're on the road. It could be, you know, it's updates of, you know, what you're doing in the recording studio. But it's other things as well. I mean, it, you know, it could be your views on politics or what's going on with immigration reform, any, any of that riveting kind of stuff. Um, fans, you'd be surprised, like to hear about it. And then, of course, you also want to sell. But it shouldn't be primarily about selling. But in every email communication, there should be a place where somebody can click to buy your download and somebody can click to buy your CD. And you have to find your voice. Writing marketing communications, which is what it is, is like writing songs. You have to practice, you have to get better, you have to get feedback, and it's just an ongoing process. What I do when I write emails, I still write emails, um, you know, I picture, and, and our email list is over a quarter of a million names, I picture one prospective customer, one customer, and I sit down and I write like I'm writing a one-on-one -on -one letter to that one person. Because it's easy to get writer's block when you're thinking of writing to 1,000 people or 5,000 people. If you picture one person and what they would be interested in hearing, it allows you to write in a much more personal way. How often to communicate? I get this question all the time. These are very rough guidelines uh, that, are, that are generally vetted. If you have a newsletter, two to, you know, one, once or twice a month generally is a good guideline. On your blog, you want to blog at least weekly. Facebook posts, you want to you post on Facebook daily. Uh, and then for those up to the minute updates, you want to tweet about six times a day. And then you want to focus on, start by selling product yourself. Now, one of my pet peeves is, you know, uh, we call it a fan list. Artists talk about fans. You got Facebook fans. And, and I, I think there's something, something deceptive about calling, calling them fans. Because fans implies, implies this, right? You're up on stage. Your fans are down there. They're looking up at you. They're admiring you. They're there to serve you. What I tell folks is don't think of them as fans, think of them as customers. When you're playing to an audience, think of them all as customers or prospective customers. And it really changes how you look at them. Because with a customer, they're not there to serve you, you're there to serve them. And it starts by giving a great performance and giving it all you got. And then you can move on to making that transaction. Because when you sell direct to the fan, you can get maximum profit margin. So you want to start there. Now you want to sell off your website, you want to sell off your Facebook page. At CD Baby we have widgets that allow you to do both of those. But the dirty little secret is most unsigned artists sell very little through their website and Facebook page. Why is that? There's just not enough people coming to your site or coming to your Facebook page. So you want to be there to capture those transactions, but you certainly need to do more. And one of the big things uh, and ways that artists obviously make the most money is by selling product at your gigs, at your merch table, where all the profit margin is yours. I have Google AdWords. You can actually test broadening your reach. Anybody here buy Google AdWords of their own name? A couple. Buy your own name, it's very, very cheap, and test it and see what kind of results you get. Or if you sound like a better known artist, let's say Bob Dylan, you sound like Bob Dylan, buy Bob Dylan's keyword, put your name on it. If you like Bob Dylan, you will like Artist X. And, and test it, it's, it's, it's relatively cheap to do that. So I talked about really focusing on being where the artists are, uh, where the fans are. The fans are on iTunes. This is our stat from CD Baby from last year. If you look at the, where the revenues for CD Baby's artists come from, 
77.4% of revenues came from iTunes. Uh, number two was Amazon, 10 and a half. Number three was CD Baby's own store. And then it's a whole bunch of other smaller groupings. Um, iTunes is where you need to be. And you need to focus your marketing efforts. Um, my friend Ariel Hyatt, somewhere around here. Hi, Ariel. Wrote a great article uh, about maximizing your iTunes strategy. Just Google Ariel Hyatt iTunes strategy. It talks about using iMixes, you know, mixing your own songs with better known songs in iMixes strategies for doing cover songs so that when somebody is searching for Hotel California and they find your version and they happen to click on it and like it, you got a sale right there and you can build from there on and using product reviews, your accounts on iTunes to do reviews of your and other music to kind of build relevance there. iTunes is key and still far and away, it's five times, it's driving five, six times the revenue of the next largest uh, music seller. And then you want to build a deep product catalog. It's very simple. And there's no excuse nowadays in 2012 to let any of your product go out of stock. Digital duplication for CDs, you can do that in quantities of 100 or 10 or, or even one or do it on demand. Same with merch and t-shirts. One of the first rules of sales is your most likely buyer is somebody who's already bought from you. If you don't have anything else to sell them, you're not going to make any extra revenue from them. So keep your old product catalog, and then gradually, as, as you're driving revenue from it, add new pieces, whether it's new releases or new pieces of merch. And another thing with merch, make sure it's cool. People have to covet it. You know, even if they don't like your music, back in my days when I was playing in hardcore bands, we would sell more merch than CDs, which is why I'm not playing in bands anymore. But it's, you know, it's just a point. If you got cool stuff, if you got great swag, people will buy it and they will want it. So it's still amazing to me in 2012 that people come to me and say, I don't want to give away my music for free. My music is worth something. I've worked X hours. I've paid X amount to record. And I tell them, get over it. You're, you know, go everywhere, put your stuff on peer-to-peer -peer sites. Your enemy is not piracy, your enemy is anonymity. You should be so lucky that 10,000 people download your stuff for free, because that means at some point in time, they may want to buy something for you. It's push versus pull. You know, when the next Jay-Z album comes out, immediately there's hundreds of thousands of people online looking for it. Jay-Z's got consumer pull. You, on the other hand, when most of your albums come out, the next one comes out, there's not too many people looking for it. You have to push. You have to push yourself out there. And so going free is, is one of the parts, one of the key parts in getting your music out there. And then there's a lot of talk about streaming sites now. Spotify is blowing up big. Um, and there's a lot of talk about how little they pay. And there's, you know, there's windowing strategies. Go to iTunes first, and then after four or six or eight weeks, get it onto Spotify. Just get your stuff on the streaming sites immediately. Treat it. Don't get yourself crazy that you're getting half a penny or five one hundredths a penny per stream. Treat it like another promo vehicle. It's a big buffet where people can consume. It's all you can eat. And so you want to have your stuff there for music consumers to explore and to find you. And then finally, tell customers what to do, right? We have a booth up there on the left. Stop by, grab one of our catalogs, and um, learn more about what we do. I just told you what to do. It's amazing. When you tell people what to do, some of them will actually do it. If you don't tell them what to do, they will not do it. Guaranteed. So tell people you have merch available for sale at the merch table, CDs for 10 bucks, shirts for 20. Tell them what to do. And not just live, do it in your emails. You know, have clear calls to action. Buy our CD or pre-order our CD or our download um, on your website as well. Make it easy for people to buy. And then finally, 
Play with it. Have some fun. Offer specials. Offer incentives. Customers love a deal. They love to get bundles. You know, first 25 purchasers of our CD get our old CD free. By the way, it's a great way to blow out old merchandise that you have that you're not selling anymore. Just give it away. It creates extra value and um, it, it drives extra transactions. Make a compelling offer. You know, buy our T-shirt, get our CD for two bucks, and tell folks about it. Tell them about it in your emails. Tell them about it when you're on stage. And finally, you know, test, again, it, it's just testing. Try different things. Don't be afraid to try stuff. Um, name your own price is something that's been talked about now for a couple of years. And uh, this, this band, I Fight Dragons, that I mentioned earlier, they tested this. They had an EP for sale for five bucks. And they were selling them for five bucks. And one point in time, during uh, one of their gigs, they decided to switch their pitch. And they, they said, listen, we have CDs available <coughs> in the back. We want everybody to walk out with a copy and pay us whatever you think it's worth. If you got five bucks, we'll take it. If you got 10 bucks, we'll take it. If all you have is a buck, we'll take that. If all you got is a $100 bill, we'll take that. And just have some fun with it. And what they found, amazingly, was they, they sold triple the number of CDs. And when they tracked it, the average revenue w per disc was $4.95. They actually made triple the money, and the, the average price dropped very, very little. So the key here is stick to the basics, have some fun with it, don't be afraid to try it. That's it for me, thank you very much. Again, if you want to stop by, ask some questions, I'll be hanging around by our booth later in. Thank you.